All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I have 50 tips and tricks for new players in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now, this video is gonna take a little bit of time, so strap right in. We are going to get right to it. Drop a like down below and subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on all notifications if you haven't already. Anyway, starting off at number one, the first tip for new players is to play the objective. Not only does this help your team out in getting wins, it also helps you get battle points at a faster rate. The more objectives you can activate or be in the objective zone is going to help yourself and your team out. Moving on to tip number two, credits through co-op and blast are probably the quickest way to gain them. The only thing is blast probably will take a little bit of time to find games because there is less of a player base that actually enjoys blast so you're probably better off going for co-op. The amount of time the games last versus the credits that you gain from them is definitely going to be much more rewarding. Tip number three, another one for gaining credits quickly is going to be completing all your challenges and milestones. If you go into the menu there is a career section where you do see all your milestones and challenges these can be completed for credits you'll see on screen and also the daily challenges will also get you extra credits for those skins that you guys want to buy tip number four is that the officer class gets battle points faster with the inspiring presence that the officer gives off with their battle command or recharge command whatever one you're using this is going to give you extra battle points to help you get the hero faster tip number five is that kills inside the objective areas and also getting kills on an objective carrier give you bonus battle points. So if you guys are looking to get heroes, make sure you're aiming for the objective, try and get kills inside that zone or kill those that have the pickups that are going for the objective as well. Tip number six is for a couple of extra battle points, buff off the spawn. As soon as the game starts, you have pretty much 10 to 15 people in front of you or behind you. You can pretty much roll either forwards or backwards, turn around and buff the entire team. This is gonna get you up to 450 to 500 battle points, pretty much for doing absolutely nothing. So if you guys can pull this off, you're going to score some extra battle points when playing the officer. Tip number seven is you will get extra credits from winning games and getting the round MVP. So if you do really well in a game and you win the game and also get MVP, you're going to get bonus credits to be spent on skins later on. Tip number eight is that more heroes become available in the final phase of each map. You guys can see here, I'm sitting in the menus waiting for the final phase to open up. We're currently in overtime and it's about to go through into the next phase because my team's capturing the objective. So I know that my team team's about to capture the objective, I can sit there, I've got my 4,000 battle points ready, and I can go into the final phase with my new hero. Tip number nine is that manual cooldown on your blaster is faster than overheating. So you might think that firing off your blaster as much as possible is probably a good thing, and then letting it get to the recharge time, this is not actually always the case. With the faster fire rate weapons that have a quick cooldown, if you get them almost to overheated and then hit the refresh, it's going to reload much faster than actually overheating your weapon and when waiting for one of the cooldown bars. Tip number 10 is that you can get bonus damage when shooting the back of vehicles like the ATST and the AAT. I'll insert a clip here for you guys where I'm shooting the back of an AAT on Naboo. You can see I'm getting almost like a headshot hit marker when I'm shooting the back of this tank and I take it out very quickly and get a bunch of battle points for doing so. Tip number 11 is that the officer's disruptor star card can make for very easy kills when pushing through. If you hit the disruptor at the right time, it will overheat all of the enemy's weapons that are nearby. So you can pretty much just run in there and have free reign at the other enemy's heads. Tip number 12 is that when playing rounds with an AT-80 or an ATM-6 on crate, you can do more damage to them from underneath. So if your team shoots off the ion disruptors at an AT-80, you can get underneath it, for example, on Hoth, and you can shoot it from underneath. The belly of the AT-80 actually takes extra damage and you'll get more battle points for shooting it. Tip number 13 is you're probably going to level yourself up much faster playing co-op and during double XP and triple XP events. These are the fastest ways to get extra levels on your heroes or even on your infantry and reinforcement classes. The fast leveling is going to come from co-op because the enemies are pretty easy to kill. You can rack up an absolute ton of kills during a round of co-op and this is going to help you to level up much faster. Tip number 14 is that you get bonus lightsaber damage when hitting someone in the back. New players may not know that you actually get bonus damage when you hit an enemy from behind, which is why you may see in the gameplay one-shotting certain infantry or doing an absolute ton of damage to other heroes. Tip number 15 comes for Jedi Master Yoda and he can actually 
dash through lightsaber blocks. So this is more of a tip for heroes versus villains. If you are coming up against an enemy that is holding block, you can use Yoda's dash attack and it will actually hit them through the block. This is designed to stop block spammers playing when you're up against Yoda. Next up, tip number 16 is that any of the sentry upgrade star cards will automatically start health regeneration when you activate your sentry. So for example, if you've lost a bit of your health and you need to get it back quickly because there are enemies pushing, activate your middle ability and you will automatically start a health regeneration phase, which you can also shoot off during the sentry phase. Tip number 17 is for Kylo Ren and it's pretty much that his freeze cancels when attacking. So if you freeze an enemy and then you go to attack them, they're automatically going to be let out of that freeze. Whereas for example, if you freeze an enemy and you don't touch them, they're going to stay in that freeze period for much longer. So it's pretty tactical. You can use this when you're going up against other heroes. If you have teammates nearby, you can freeze them and leave them alone and let your teammates take care of them. Moving on to number 18, the strike and dash combo is an instant kill. Heroes like Yoda and Luke or anyone that has a dash attack can use one lightsaber strike regular first and then use the R1 ability to dash through an enemy, which is going to wipe out any infantry, including heavies and buffed officers. This is a great combination not only to wipe out enemies, but also to keep yourself on the move and make you a harder target to hit for any other enemies that might be lurking around. Tip number 19 is that Yoda's presence actually breaks you out of stuns and freezes. If you take a look at the video in the background, you will see that I get caught in Darth Vader's force choke. I use the presence ability for Yoda, which is his middle ability, and it breaks me straight out of that force choke so that I'm not stuck in it for too long. Being stuck in freezes or chokes can pretty much be an instant kill sometimes if you get stuck in the wrong position or when there's enemies in front of you. So being able to break yourself out of it is definitely very useful. Tip number 20 might seem like a simple one, but it is to buff yourself before you go into battle. If you're using the recharge command, for example, you want your abilities to be active before you push a fight. So use that before running in. If you're playing Yoda, for example, and you want a little bit of extra health before you push a fight, activate presence. It's pretty much common sense at this point. Give yourself that little bit of extra health before you push a group of enemies. Tip number 21 is to use the high ground. high ground. You will see this clip here, and this is actually a really cool clip I got last night. I am playing as the aerial, and I'm facing off against Darth Vader. Now I can tell this Vader actually really wants to kill me because I was pestering him a little bit before this clip started, but you will see I try to keep the high ground at all times. I know playing as the aerial, I have much better mobility, and also I can play the high ground to my advantage. So you will see that I do this as much as possible, and it ends up with me killing Vader, which should shouldn't really happen when you're playing the aerial, but I guess that's just the way it works. Tip number 22 is that the smart ion grenade is great against turrets and vehicles like speeder bikes. The smart ion grenade, or the SIG as some of us like to call it, immediately kills anyone on a speeder bike as well as destroys any turrets in the vicinity. So if you're sick of getting pestered by turrets or speeder bikes and you're playing the assault class, use the smart ion grenade and peg it at one of these, which will cause it to explode straight away. It's super satisfying killing those pesky speeder bike players with one of these so quickly. Tip number 23 is that Palpatine actually has two hand lightning. I see a lot of brand new players to the game that are actually just using one trigger for Palpatine's lightning attack. And while it may actually connect, you can use two hand lightning, which does extra damage. By holding down both triggers or both mouse clicks on PC, you guys can do double the amount of damage. However, your stamina will drain faster. But when playing Palpatine, as much as I hate people that play Palpatine, you can do bonus damage with using both hands. Tip number 24 is that clone jet troopers absolutely melt heroes. Now you guys did see that clip of Vader before, but I'm going to insert a couple of other clips here of me absolutely destroying some heroes with the clone aerial. It's one of the most underrated reinforcements in my opinion. And if you guys get the hang of how he fires and you can land headshots with him, as well as use the rocket to your advantage when lightsaber heroes are blocking, you are going to be an absolute pest towards enemy heroes. Getting onto tip number 25, I think in my opinion, the barrage star card is extremely underrated. If you guys use the heavy shield, yes, it can be good, but personally, I think the barrage star card is much more worth it. I'm gonna insert a clip here where we're on Naboo, and you're gonna see me shoot the barrage into the hallway as we're heading into the palace. I managed to cause like 850 damage and pick up two kills with one use of the barrage star card. Not only does it give me a ton of battle points, it gets me kills and it helps my team to push objectives because no one wants to be around when all three of those grenades go off. Getting into tip number 26, the diagonal dash towards infantry. When you're 
you're playing a lightsaber hero will mess with their aim. So you guys might be wondering what I mean by this. Whenever I play a lightsaber hero and I need to close the gap between me and an enemy, I like to do two diagonal dashes. So I'll dash diagonally to the right and then diagonally to the left. This kind of just messes with the infantry's aim so that they don't just have a straight shot at your head if you're sprinting in a direct line towards them. It's good to mix it up and do this because I feel like you're just going to survive that much longer and it's a really good tip when playing heroes. Next up with tip number 27 is that bonus damage dash cards one hit all infantry except for heavies and buffed officers. Now what I mean by this is that the bonus damage for raise dash, Obi-Wan's defensive rush or anything like that is going to one hit infantry. My personal favorite is the lineup weaklings card for General Grievous. This absolutely slaughters through enemies when you get a good run and it one hits all infantry except for heavies and officers like I mentioned before. So if you haven't tested out these cards, I have them on most of my heroes for Galactic Assault. They're definitely worth it. And if you were wondering, yes, they are really fun to use. Tip number 28 is to shoot at a heavy's feet when they're using the combat shield. Occasionally you'll come up against a heavy enemy and you'll blast them to pieces, but there are times where you do a lot of damage and don't quite get the kill and they activate that pesky heavy shield. Now the heavy shield does block for a bunch of damage. So if you do have them very close to death, look to aim at the heavy's feet. And if they don't crouch down, you can still pick up a quick kill without having to shoot through the shield. Next up is actually the reverse of that tip when you're playing a heavy yourself. Again, if you are using the combat shield, make sure to crouch. It's not hard, just crouch down. That way they can't shoot your feet and you're gonna get a bunch of extra damage resistance from that heavy shield. Next up is tip number 30. And this one is that when being mind tricked by Ray, I find the best defense is to dash and jump up in the air as high as you can. If you're playing heroes versus villains, you know how frustrating it can be to play against Ray because her mind trick just reverses all your controls. Well, if you do get all your controls reversed, just dash to the side and then jump up in the air and repeat until the mind trick wears off. I find this the most effective way to stay away from Rey when she's trying to attack you after she's hit you with the mind trick. So give that one a go in Heroes of the Villains the next time you're playing and hopefully it helps you to counter that ability. Tip number 31 is that jumping and then swinging in mid air helps you to travel higher, further and faster, allowing you to close the gap to your enemies or escape your enemies if you're being pushed and you can travel travel around the map more efficiently. You'll see in my gameplay, whenever I play a lightsaber hero, if I'm running towards something, I'm running and jumping and swinging my lightsaber in midair because it does travel me that much faster and that much further. It's great for getting on top of buildings that might be a little bit out of reach of the regular jump. So if you guys haven't tested this out, make sure to do so. Next up is number 32, and this is to use the smart ion grenade again on heavy or specialist shields. So if you're using a specialist bubble or you're using an assault class against a specialist bubble, make sure to throw that SIG towards them, especially when you're playing against heavies as well. If you have it equipped, you may as well use it. Throw it at the heavy shield, watch it pop, and then rain fire down on your enemy. Tip number 33 may seem like something simple, but a lot of players neglect it. It is to constantly check your minimap. I see a lot of people playing heroes that die because they don't see me creeping up behind them on the minimap. Especially when I'm playing another hero, I can see where your dot is on the map. So if you're not watching it and I am, I know exactly where your position is. I can run around and flank behind you and pick up an easy kill. Tip number 34 for this video is going to be to change your shoulder in third person to peek around the corner. Now when playing in third person, you can peek over your left shoulder or your right shoulder, depending on which angle of a wall you're standing behind, you should change the shoulder of your camera so that you can see potential enemies running around this. You'll see I do it with not only blaster heroes, but also lightsaber heroes and infantry. It's really helpful whenever you're playing to change shoulders. Next up is tip number 35, and this is going to be one for hero lightsaber combat. If you're playing heroes versus villains, or you're up against another enemy hero in galactic assault, holding down the block button, then immediately hitting the attack button after an enemy performs an attack will perform a perfect parry where you lose no health but still strike your enemy. Now this can take a little bit of time to get the timing perfect but when you master it it can be super effective. You can have next to no health, have a full health enemy attacking you and you can still block and hit them at the same time and not have to worry about yourself taking damage. Next up is tip number 36 and this is only infantry can pick up objectives not reinforcements and heroes. And I feel like I shouldn't have to say this one but I have seen a few new players actually struggle with this. They'll be 
playing for example a death trooper or an aerial and they'll look to pick up objectives while they're actually playing it. This is not the case, you can't actually do this. If you're playing an objective where you need to activate a bomb, any reinforcement can activate those objectives, but if it's something like picking up an ion disruptor, this you cannot do, you have to leave it to the regular infantry. Tip number 37 is with General Grievous and it's that his claw rush ability hits a second time when you're standing back up. This is a perfect opportunity to use on heavies or buffed officers if you know that your first hit isn't going to kill them. Like I said before, Grievous's claw rush, even with the extra damage star card lineup weaklings, can wipe out any infantry, but it can't wipe out heavies or buffed officers. So to do this, once you hit them the first time, deactivate the ability by hitting the button again, and you will stand up and stomp on the enemy for a second hit. Tip number 38 is that Yoda's Unleash has a charge up meter in the bottom corner where the icon is. If you watch this, you'll see a little blue ring go around the ability icon. This is where you know Yoda's Unleash ability is fully charged up or not. Watch this, once it's fully charged, you will do extra damage. The next tip is actually for Obi-Wan's force push, and that's that it needs to be charged and aimed. I know when I first started playing Obi-Wan and when new players start playing him, they don't realize you actually have to charge up his push. So you have to hold down the trigger and aim it in the direction of your enemy. You do have a little reticle dot in the middle of the screen. This is what you want to point towards the enemy you're trying to force push. All right, now tip number 40, we're into the final 10 tips. Aiming your reticle at enemies when saber blocking can deflect blaster shots for easy kills. Obi-Wan is the best to do this if you see a sentry lined up in front of you. I tend to run towards them and use my block to deflect every single shot back into their face, making for an easy kill. Now keep in mind this is better with heroes that have a high stamina pool when they are blocking or deflecting, so heroes like General Grievous probably aren't the best for this, but with Obi-Wan it is super satisfying. Quick tip though, on top of that, just if you are going up against a supercharged sentry or an explosive sentry, you can still take splash damage, so I wouldn't try to deflect those, but if it is a regular sentry, feel free to do so. Now, tip number 41 is that abilities like Yoda's dash, Obi-Wan's defensive rush, and Darth Maul's spin attack can actually deflect blaster shots too. I'm going to insert a clip of Arcade here where I am shooting at Yoda. I use the dash attack that Yoda has and he deflects these blaster bolts straight back into the B1 battle droid when using this ability. So if you guys can time it right and you can keep that reticle in the middle of your enemy's face, this is going to deflect some of the blaster bolts back at them and can be really useful with picking up kills. Tip number 42 is to do with your aiming and this is going to be that you want to hip fire at point blank range. You don't want to be aiming down sight when you're at point blank range because it does mess with how quickly you can actually turn your camera and if enemies are rolling around in front of you when they're in close quarters it's going to be much harder to aim at them and you're probably going to end up dying. If an enemy turns a corner and they're right in front of your face don't bother zooming in just shoot from your hip. Tip number 43 is to scope out and re-aim down sight to trigger your aim assist. Now this one's probably more for the console players but if you are shooting at multiple enemies or you're shooting at a group make sure you scope out and then re-aim down sight to trigger your aim assist. It's going to lock you onto the next enemy that much quicker and it's going to snap you towards them in the best way possible. It's a trick that takes a little bit of getting used to but when you master it, it is absolutely golden for taking out groups of enemies. Next up is tip number 44 and this is to cool down your blaster while rolling. I mentioned earlier in the video that cooling down your blaster when it's almost overheated is the best way to do so. Although when you are cooling down your blaster, you are vulnerable for at least one or two seconds. So what I like to do when I'm playing is almost almost overheat my blaster fully, roll out of the way of the enemy shooting and refresh while I'm rolling. This makes you much harder to hit and it also gets your blaster refreshed in the most efficient way possible. The next tip is number 45 and we are going to be strafing while shooting at an enemy. A lot of players currently are new to the game so the tip I'm going to give to you guys is to strafe while you're shooting at enemies. I see a lot of people currently that are standing still or running in a straight line towards me when they're trying to shoot at me. This makes the easiest kills possible for your enemy enemy, if you're in a blaster shootout with someone in front of you, you want to try to strafe left and right with your character on the left analog stick or with your D and A buttons if you're playing on PC. If you can strafe and still land shots, it's going to make you very hard to kill and your survivability is going to be that much better. Tip number 46 is to do with firing off objectives. Now when you get the ion disruptor in a round on Naboo or Hoth or whatever map it may be, once you're within 100 meters, you can fire off this ion disruptor. Now the thing that most people don't think about and it's a super simple 
simple tip is to crouch while you're trying to fire this off. The ion disruptor does need to charge up, which does take a little bit of time. So while you're sitting there waiting for it to charge up, you probably want to be crouched. It makes you a smaller target and you're much harder to hit for your enemies. And you can see from the gameplay in the background, I have found the perfect spot on Naboo to crouch down and shoot off the objective. All right, moving into the last couple of tips. Number 47 is that tanks can be destroyed by lightsaber heroes. You simply want to jump up and swing at them or even jump on top of them and swing at them. Now, while I don't recommend doing this, if you are new, it does take a little bit of practice. You can lose a hero very quickly if you mess this up. I wouldn't recommend doing it on ATSTs, but if you're up against an AAT on Naboo or Kashyyyk or one of the Clone Wars maps, you can jump on the front of it and actually swing your lightsaber at it if you're standing on top of it. This causes a lot of damage and makes it really easy to explode the AATs. All right, tip number 48 is that after earning 4,000 battle points in a round, respawn to get a hero, do not wait to die. I see a lot of people missing out on heroes because they go on a really good streak as an officer or an assault, they get their 4,000 battle points before anyone else and they wait to die. If you wait for someone to kill you, there is a lot of time where someone else can sneak in and take that hero from you, especially if it's very close for the first person to get 4,000 battle points. You wanna just hit the options button and respawn yourself instead of waiting for an enemy to kill you. Tip number 49 is that heroes become available again when going into the capital ship phase on capital supremacy. So for example, you guys can see that I am playing Yoda on capital supremacy. I have quite a big kill streak going and when we go onto the capital ship, we have to board a transport. Once we board the transport, it takes us back to the spawn menu where I now have to select Yoda again. And I have to be the first person to select Yoda again because there are gonna be people that try to steal the hero from you. So just know if you have a hero in the ground phase of capital supremacy, you're gonna have to select them again when you get up onto the capital ship. And finally, last but definitely not least, the biggest tip that I can give you in Battlefront 2, don't play Palpatine. Just don't do it. I'm serious. Don't do it. Everyone hates sweaty Palpatine. Don't do it. Cool. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Anyway, guys, that is everything I have for this video. I appreciate all of you tuning in. I hope the tips really helped you guys in getting familiar with the game. Like I said at the start of the video, this is more tips for new players than it is for experienced players. But even if you are experienced and you're watching this, I hope you picked up something brand new that can help you out when you jump on the battlefront next. I am going to get out of here though. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. As always, I appreciate all of you tuning in today. I will see you in the next one and may the force be with you always. The Sith are all powerful.